What's up everyone? Welcome to church. The service will be starting momentarily so you have plenty of time to go grab your tea or coffee, hit up the porcelain throne, and invite someone that you know to join us right now. Get your family, get ready, and enjoy this great online experience here at People's. Good morning, People's Church. Welcome. We're glad you're here today to worship with us. Come on, let's lift up our voice and sing.
the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song cause you are good Yes, church, be confident in that truth this morning, okay? God is good regardless of your circumstance, and He will never, ever let you down. 
Well, again, good morning to you and welcome to Peoples Online. If you're new and this is your first time joining us, then a special welcome to you. We're glad that you're here with us. As a church, we have committed to making your online experience informative, refreshing, and inspirational. I love that we are still able to learn and worship together as we continue to persevere through this constant changing and uncertain time. The church has always forged ahead, has always been a solid rock for us to stand on, and so we will not be shaken. We're gonna continue to hold steadfast. Here's what you need to know for this week. Again, if you're new and this is your first time joining us or your first time tuning in to Peoples Online, we would love it if you could text the word HELLO to 289-512-2290. We want to connect with you, give you a proper greeting and some further connection points to properly guide you. Thank you so much. People's family, church has been different for many of us, but the point is that we are still doing church, even if it's from our living rooms or our bedrooms. Sunday services, daily devotionals, and Wednesday times of worships are available to you. All we did was move from our land sites to the website, thepc.ca, where all the links you need are available. You can also find what you need on our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram. Our kids and our youth ministries are also alive and active, both offering daily challenges and weekly age-appropriate lessons. You can check out our website for the links you need in each ministry's social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram. And parents, encourage your kids and your students to tune in and to also participate in the fun and crazy daily challenges where prizes are always up for grabs. Until all of these restrictions loosen up, and I believe that they will soon in Jesus' name, we currently cannot be about the in-person laying on of hands when it comes to prayer. But we do want to make you aware that we are still available for any prayer needs at any time. Simply email your prayer requests to pray at the pc.ca or you can phone the church and ask to speak to one of our pastors. FaceTime or Zoom are other viable options as well. Both Pastor Ryan and Pastor Leah would like to make everyone aware that they will be camping out out front of the church tomorrow, May 25th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in order to say hi, but to also collect some non-perishable items for the PC Kids Food Drive. In Proverbs, it says that the generous will themselves be blessed for they share their food with the poor. So come on, get out, get some fresh air, take the family for a rip in the car, Come say hi to our Family Life pastors as you drive through to drop off some food for those who need it the most in this time of life. Thank you so much for your kindness and your thoughtfulness. Giving and tithing will always be an essential part of who we are and what we believe to be part of our worship. And as you know, we do have four easy ways for you to give. If you have any questions about giving in general, giving towards missions and families in need, or you would like to set up recurring giving, please feel free to send us an email to give at the pc.ca. As a church, we have always been about missions, local and abroad, and helping those in need in our community that are involved in all of our outreach ministries. So thank you, church family, a million times over for your consistent, overwhelming kindness and generosity. Now, let's pray for the offering. Dear God, thank you so much much that your promises are sure. Thank you that you are faithful and thank you that we can rely on you. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, our talents, and our financial resources to meet the needs of others. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. May you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine upon us. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray, and everybody said, amen. That's all, folks. Thanks again for tuning in today. In order to remain in the loop with all the current updates within our church community for every ministry and age group, you can phone the church, visit our website, or any of our social media platforms. Or, again, if you're new, don't forget to text the word hello to the number on your screen. Enjoy the rest of the service as we find some balance in our lives. Hey, everybody. We're coming at you again with another Porch Talk. And today I have the privilege to chat with Andrew Gale. Now, Andrew Gale, first of all, friend, but also man of God and long-term attender as well at People's Church, 27 years. I know he looks way too young for that. He started attending when he was four years old. 
but uh, he's going to share know. with us today. I know it's going to help you and encourage you. And so bless you. Here we go. Porch Docs. God's been speaking to me a lot through his word. Um, he's been both challenging me as well as uh, comforting me and our family. And uh, so I thought I'd share a couple of the, the scriptures that he's been speaking to me about. One being Matthew 6, verse 32 and 33. And um, that scripture says, um, the pagans run after these things. These things meaning food, shelter, clothing, the necessities of life. Um, and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you as well and um, God's been challenging me with this this scripture where it says seek first the kingdom of God isn't just about you know when you start your day beginning your your day by doing devotions um, it's a lot deeper than that um, he's asking do you value what I value um, are you about building my kingdom or about, are you about building your own kingdom? So that's been a little sobering. Um, as I study uh, verse 32 in another translation, it actually says that uh, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. And again, God's been asking me, if these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, what dominates your thoughts? So um, this has been actually a really great time, if I can say that. Um, for reflection, for evaluation, for reprioritizing, and taking a look at what's really important, not just what I think is important, but what God says is important. The other scripture that I'd like to share is Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, which most of us know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Back in the early 2000s, as you're aware, Pastor Nori and I went to India. And uh, I was speaking on this particular passage to a group of new pastors. And uh, the night prior to my speaking, uh, I was sleeping and God woke me up in the middle of the night and he said this to me. He said, you acknowledge me because I'm God, but you trust me because I'm daddy. And it's like, oh. And what God has has been sharing with me during this time is look um, there's a, a lot of people that are struggling a lot of people that are hurting there's a lot of tremendous uncertainty but there is one constant and that's the faithfulness of God I can trust his word he's faithful towards his promises and he's faithful towards taking care of his own his children and uh, and that's been a tremendous joy and a, and, and a tremendous comfort during this time. And I guess I'd like to just close by saying uh, hello to uh, the church family. Uh, we miss you, we love you. Um, and I say that not just on my behalf, but on Jackie's, on Callum's, and on McKeeley's behalf as well. God bless you. Hello church family, we love you, we miss you, and we so just want to stay connected with all of you. That's why we've been doing the porch talks, and uh, really it's just even put more of our church family out there in front of everyone so we can stay connected. And I just want to announce that we're going to do something else that we think is a great idea. We're going to launch something called Table Talk on Us, and really it's just simply this is that we wanna make sure that you're connecting and staying connected even with your family. And you know what, there's no better place to do that than of course around the dinner table. So what's gonna happen is every week we're gonna draw a name and we are going to send you supper to your home so that you and your family can sit down of course, just have great conversation and be together that way. And uh, how we're gonna do this is just simply, you know, we, we really would love to have more information about how everybody's connecting and 
watching online and even what we could do better. And so all I want you to do to be part of the draw is just simply text to this number, okay, the number is 289-512-2290 and just simply text the word table talk, okay? And that will lead you just to a small survey. If you can fill that out, you'll be really helping us out. And of course, all the names from that will be put in and every week we're gonna do a draw and it's gonna be table talk on us. And we're gonna bring you supper and I'm gonna love it because whether it's me or one of the other staff, we're gonna to get to see you face to face and it's gonna be absolutely amazing and we can stay connected even more. So have a great weekend, see you soon. Hey, good morning everybody. It's uh, May 2-4, and but not really the May 2-4 weekend. It's, I know it's confusing, but uh, so glad that I can be with you at your house today, just sharing God's word with you. And you know what? I'm going to start with the scripture, and then we're going to just dive right in. And so it says this. This is going to be familiar to all of you. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Well, that's pretty significant right now. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, and a time for war and a time for peace. You have to know today that life has all of these things, and there's a, a balance that has to be known or to be found in these places. And that in this life, there's going to be space and there's going to be just a spot for all of this. We need to be people that have balance. And there are so many challenging things that are happening right now in our world, this pandemic. And of course, that comes with panic and it comes with fear and the loss, the loss of life, the loss of stability, the, the security or the loss of the ordinary, the loss of many freedoms right now at the moment, of course, all of this, all of this. In, in this life, there's going to be many moments. There's going to be many defining moments. Now, when I look back on my own life, I think about things that stood out. I remember when Elvis Presley died. I remember when John Lennon was killed. I remember when Ronald Reagan was shot in 1981. I remember when the space uh, shuttle Challenger exploded across the sky in 1986. I remember how I felt even as a young person. I remember being devastated by how I felt about it. I remember when the wall came down in Germany in the early 90s. I remember Desert Storm and the Gulf War, that also in the early 90s. I remember Columbine the school shooting. I remember being at work and going back to my house so that I could watch it unfold and sitting there in that moment actually praying that, you know, there wouldn't be major loss of life, but we know that there was. It was a defining moment. I remember Y2K and all the fears that we had about the, that and what was going to happen. And of course, not long after we, we got through that, of course, 9-11, and the tragedy of watching the planes, sitting in shock, watching those buildings fall down, things that we never, ever thought would happen have happened. I remember when Saddam Hussein was captured in 2003. I remember hearing on the news that Osama bin Laden had been, well, not captured, but really executed. I remember hearing about the Boston Marathon bombing in 2013. I also look back and I remember key people that I think of, famous people, when Kurt Cobain took his own life, when Whitney Houston died, when John Candy went too soon, when Michael Jackson passed, when Chris Farley 
died and when Prince died. And these are just some that we remember. And I also remember when, of course, Billy Graham passed just a few years ago, when David Maines did. And even this week, Ravi Zacharias. You see, this, though, at this moment, this is a short list. These are the ones that I remember and remember easily that impacted me, but there are many more, and all of us would share about the many things that have impacted us and have actually been defining moments. And these are more sort of famous things that we know outside, but many of you have experienced defining moments in your personal life, you know, both successes and failures. When I look back at my own life, I think about in 1986 when my mother passed, It was one of those life-defining moments. When I look back, it was basically defined just simply like this, that there was before that and there's been after that. And so here we stand today in 2020 in the middle of a world crisis, and it's real. And I hear people say things like, it will never be the same. But I want to encourage you today, let's not be afraid of that. COVID-19 is going to go down in history as, as many other things have already. And will it be a defining moment? Yes, it will be. And, and will things be different afterwards? I think they're going to be. And will it be all good? Probably not. <laughs> we already know that to be true. Anyone who's experienced loss or the loss of a loved one, it's not all good. But I want to just say to you, will it be all bad? And I want to say a definite no. (laughs) You see, in life, we are going to have both. Just like the writer of Ecclesiastes was telling us, there are times to be born, there's times to die. There's times to experience all of these things, and these things are held in the balance. And we are to be people that actually stand in the balance. But even in the midst of all of that, I want to declare this to you as well. In the middle of all of that, God is still God. He's still good, he's still working, and he's still in this. And he wants us to know how we can actually hold these things in the balance. I'm sure just like you, I've been reflecting a lot in this season, thinking about what matters, realizing that there's many things that that aren't in my control. And, and this COVID-19 season, of course, is full of challenges. For some, it has meant job losses, financial pressures, family life pressures. For some, it's, it's been just the thing you've needed. You finally have had that reprieve. Life has been able to press pause, and you've been able to just step back and have a chance to rest that you would have never been afforded otherwise. For some of you, government help has been the main thing that's kept you financially fine, and you've been able to relax. For some of you, it's been a very stressful season. You're in an employment that has needed you to work even more to keep up. And you know what? You've earned every cent that you've worked for, but you can't wait for this to be over so that you can just take a breath. You might be a business owner right now, and your business has suffered greatly, and there's been a huge drop in your income, but the expenses just keep on coming. Some of you are in employment and and your business or your company has totally had to pivot. It seems like you work twice as hard to accomplish, you know, the same thing or even less than before. And some of you that are dual income families are now trying to homeschool your children and work from home and life has been a three ring circus for the last 10 or 11 weeks. I'm not trying to uh, drive us all into a depression here. It's just the reality of where we're at in this moment. You see, even some of you, you're alone in this isolation. You're not among others. And this alone time was good for the first week, but it's lost its glamour. And you can't wait to be among people. Now, I realize that there's just a huge diversity or bandwidth of whether it's wins or challenges of this season. It's big. The differences are big. But regardless of where you stand, I want to help us today be aware of some things. I've been realizing that I need to travel light. And I don't think it's just me. I think we need to travel light. To balance the things that matter and let go of the things that do not. And I'm believing that there are amazing things that we're going to learn right now. 
And if we haven't been learning them already, I believe that as we jump into this series, it's going to help you to be learning and actually help us to frame and capture this moment. Because I believe that at the end of this, God willing, we're going to come out the other side and there's going to be more balance in the future, in our lives. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about what we actually need in our life and try to hold those things in balance. And we're going to try and we're going to attempt to answer what is a balanced and complete life. And of course, I believe, you know, you have to know you're, you got a preacher coming at you today. It's the balanced Christian life. And I really believe that this is a thing that we can have and we, can, and we need to strive towards. And so it's a good question, actually, for us to ask and you to ask yourself, what is it? What is a balanced life? What is the balanced Christian life? And, and we, we have to know that today there are definite things that we need in our life. But there is also a lot of stuff that you can fill your life with. There's no shortage of distractions. And knowing the difference between what is a need and everything else is important. So, and, and I, I believe that as we do this, this is going to be totally practical. Because this isn't all spiritual things. Because I actually want to say to you, you're going to hear it from me today, even as a pastor. Okay, there's natural things, there's spiritual things, and, and often these things tie together. But you know what? Sometimes they're not so closely tied, and that's okay. This is the way that God has created us and created the universe and created, you know, just people and humanity. And it's okay. It's all right for us to admit that today. So here are some of the main things that we're going to be talking about over the next couple weeks. We're going to talk about work-life balance. We're going to talk about relational life balance. Uh, Things like your relationship with your spouse or your kids or your friends, your church, your community. Um, Holding those relational life things in balance. Having emotional life balance. Having financial life balance. Having physical life balance having spiritual life balance. These are all things that we need to have in our life. We're trying to break it down. I think this is a very good and significant list. Now, each of these things in each of these areas, we are going to discuss how to balance. So just as an example, next week, we're going to discuss work life and having a work life balance. Now, it's just simply this idea, you know, our Are we going to balance just simply this? Am I working to live or am I living to work? (laughs) See, work life needs to be balanced. So each of these topics we're going to dive into in a deeper way. And I just simply present this idea to you today so that we can understand it, that we're going to hit them individually. But I also want to just simply start us off today with all of these areas your work life, your, your family life, your relational life, um, your spiritual life, your financial life, all of these things also, not just individually do they need to be held in balance, but even amongst each other, they need to be held in balance. Some of us think that balance is this place of no tension, no fatigue, no tough decisions. And I don't actually believe that that's what balance is. You see, balance isn't the absence of pressure or tension or any weight, okay? What balance is is actually the constant adjustment to navigate the pressure. Now, I'm going to just step over here just a little bit. I didn't warn everybody about this. But if I asked everybody in your house right now and I said, stand up to your feet. Maybe you you want to try this with me. But just simply this, when you try to stand on one foot, now it's pretty easy to stand on two feet, right? We're we're used to that sort of balance. But when I move to one foot, all of a sudden, I can feel my foot doing something down there. What's it doing? It's balancing. It's holding, you know, this weight that I have, and it's holding it so that I can stand here like this. You see, balance isn't the absence of pressure. Oh, you can see my foot going there, right? Actually, balance is that ability, that ability to hold even the pressure of life, the weight of life in balance, to hold it in control. And so, 
Some of us were looking for this like utopia of life that <clears throat> maybe I can get to a spot that there isn't going to be pressure, that there isn't going to be all this stuff coming at me. And I, I don't believe that that's a reality, that actually in this life, you're going to have to figure out how to have your financial life in balance with your spiritual life. And you're going to have to figure out how to have your, your spiritual life in balance with your work life and, and your relational life. And you're going to have to figure out how to have your emotional life in balance with the others. These things, you're going to have to do it. You're not going to get to a spot that you don't have this tension or this pressure. The ability is actually, you know, to gain muscle, to gain ability, and actually to hold these things in balance. So that's what this series is going to be about. And I really believe it's timely because this is a moment of evaluation, if you're not evaluating right now, I want to just encourage you, start. Take a look at your life. Get in tune with what really matters. Your, your family will be better for it. Your workplace will be better for it. Your spiritual life, your church life, your community will be better for it. If you know how to balance these things and you actually know what you need in your life. You see, these tensions need to be navigated, and they need to be navigated well. Because when we don't get this stuff right— we trade actually good things for bad things. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, it says, What does it benefit you if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? I say not. Of course, nothing is more valuable than your soul. But it's, it's interesting that in, you know, times in our life, we have traded We've pursued things in this life. We maybe, in a way, people would look at us and it's like, we've gained the whole world. You've gained the great career or the great position or you've gained popularity or the, whatever it is, the dream job or, or who, you know, relationships with whoever. And in the midst of that pursuit, we've traded away actually what matters. Some of us have traded our career for relationship with our family. Some of us have traded our marriage for another relationship, and we've lost our testimony in, in the, just in the middle of that. Some of us, we've pursued wealth, and we've lost our soul in the process. Some of us have let our emotions and our feelings guide our life, and we've made unbalanced decisions. Some of us, we, we've we haven't taken care of ourselves. We're tired, we're worn out, we're unmotivated, we're overweight, we're even sick because we're not in balance. Some of us, we are Christians only by name, but not by habits, not by actions. And, and we know more about entertainment and leisure than we do about the word of God or even what the heart of God or the, the, the perspective of God is towards this life. You see, that's not balance. And it doesn't profit us anything to sort of gain what the world desires and lose and forfeit our soul. We want to avoid the extremes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16. It, it, you may not even have ever <laughs> realized this passage, but this is what it says. Do not be overrighteous, neither be Overwise. When you look at those things, you'd be like, what do you mean? Can you really be overrighteous? Can you be overwise? And it says, why destroy yourself? And then it says, do not be over wicked. <laughs> do not be a fool. Why die before your time? It is good to grasp the one and let go of the other. And it says this, whoever fears God will avoid all extremes. You might ask, you're like, how can I be over-righteous? You know what? I've seen, I've been going to church for a long time. You've probably met somebody. I know I have met many at times that I would probably describe them. They are so heavenly minded that they are no earthly good. Now, I don't love using that statement, but you get the picture and you understand what I'm saying. You, you know, sometimes we forget how to just be friends with people. Sometimes we can't let down this Christian persona just long enough to be an ordinary person. And I want to remind you that there's a balance and that, you know, often we're so busy trying to change people and fix people 
And, and, and we need to know that there's a balance. Sometimes we can get legalistic and we just see the flaws of everybody around us and we don't realize that God loves those people and that they're somewhere on their journey. And you know what? We should be humble in our approach towards them. That, you know, if anything, we could inspire them to follow Christ. Not, you know, not pretend that we're something that we're not. And so you realize that you can be, in a way, even righteousness needs to be held in balance. You may have not heard, you're hearing it from a preacher here today. This needs to be held in balance. Can I be overwise? Is that really a thing? But you know, you've probably heard that statement before, too smart for their own good. You know, sometimes we have head knowledge, but no experience. And that head knowledge gives us a false sense of confidence. <laughs> you know, you've flown the, the, the flight simulator in the video game, and that somehow you think now that you can fly a real plane. It's not the same thing. It may be a good start, but it's not everything. And all of us have met somebody along the way that was sort of overwise. They had a, a false confidence. Oh, I can think of different stories. I remember being rollerblading one day, and, and we were there with the young adults, and this one lady, you know, she went, she took off, and she was just like strutting her stuff and, you know, showing how good she was. And she only went about, I don't know, two or three hundred feet up the road. We were all there, a huge group, and she just wipes out, scraped all up. Oh, I mean, it was, it was a scene, right? But I was just like, she was trying to live outside of her ability, probably to show us all how good she was, but it did not end well. It was quite embarrassing. Actually, all of us have met people that think they can do, they haven't learned yet, experience hasn't shown them yet, they haven't quite got there. They've got some of the smarts, but in a way, it's like they're too smart for their own good. Now, I hope I don't have to explain to us the third part of this was don't be over wicked. Don't be a fool and destroy and end your life early. I hope that you, you would realize today that extremes destroy us. And this series is going to be about living in balance. And I believe that the starting point example is just simply God. You see, it tells us in Scripture that God created the world and then he rested. Of course, he did this great work, but he also, at the end of it, he rested. Uh, we know the story of Jesus, that Jesus, when he would minister to the people several times, this is recorded in Scripture, that after he would minister to people, that he would retreat, and that he would spend time alone with God, and he would rest and replenish himself. And, and uh, we know in Scripture this idea, just the Sabbath day principle, we need to take a break. We all need that. We all need a rest. We need a day to replenish and get refocused. Life isn't all about accomplishing. There needs to be room for margin. Why do I mention this? This is one of these examples about life needs to be held in balance. We're actually better. When our life is in balance, we function at another level. There's places actually, there's positive things that, that we will accomplish more when we actually realize the balance. And there's very negative things that we will avoid in life when we also realize the balance. And all of this is so significant. And I'm just trying to whet our appetite a little bit today. I see again and again in Scripture that we are to be people of the balance. We've got to learn to say no. We also have to know the right time to say yes. Your life cannot be all work. It can't be only relationships. It can't be only directed by your emotions. It isn't only about money, either having it or not having enough or the pursuit thereof. Taking care of yourself physically matters. Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Are you praying? Are you resting? You need to feed your body and your soul. Are you connecting relationally? Are you in relationship with God? These are just some of the starting points, and we're going to hit many more of them over the next couple weeks. But I want to just start this series with just a bit of an evaluation 
of ourselves. And so there's these three little statements that I want to hit you with, and I'm going to wrap this up this morning. And the first is just this. Can I ask you to check yourself? Ask yourself, how am I doing right now? Is my life out of balance? Am I finding myself just totally thrown off by anything that comes my way? If, am I finding myself, am I being short with the people in my life? Am I, am I um, acting out in anger? Uh, you know, is my life out of balance? Do an honest evaluation. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 tells us, says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand the Lord's will. And don't, you know, don't fill your life with so many other things, but be filled with the Spirit of God. That's what God tells us. He says, you know, he gives this example, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit of God. I don't think that this is just about alcohol consumption. This is just really God's like trying to say, do you know what your life needs to be full of? Don't be full of other things that don't matter as much, but be filled with the Spirit of God. And, and so that we would be able to know what matters. You know, all of us need to be aware. Something getting away on me right now. Am I being someone that I don't want to be? So I just ask you just first, first of all, be careful then how you live as a wise person, a balanced person. So check yourself today. The second is this, pace yourself. <laughs> this is a lifetime event. Your workload, I, I, I like this. It said, consider the ant in Proverbs chapter 6. It says, go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, no ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. You see, bit by bit, work away at your life. I'm not just talking about physical work. I'm just talking about everything. I'm talking about your family, your home, the, the chores or the responsibility. Yes, we're talking about your career. We're talking about your spiritual life, your church life, your Christian life. But I want to remind you, I want to say to you today, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And, and so many times we can be overwhelmed by the greatness of the task that's in front of us, whatever it may be. And, and we get stuck not doing anything because we can't break it down. We don't know how to pace ourselves. We don't know how to live in that balance. And you know what? I'm hoping just me even saying this, for some of you, this would be a relief. I'm telling you, slow down. Start to pace yourself. Realize that you've got to run this out over the long term. Figure out how to do that. Consider the ant. God tells us in his word, he shows us how to do it. He diligently, over time, he gets ready in the summer. He gets ready for other times of harvest. He gets ready for winter time. This is the way that we're supposed to live. So check yourself, pace yourself, and finally today, I just want to end with this, center yourself. It says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. It says, so do not worry saying... What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need them. And he tells us, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I just simply, as we're going to be starting this over the next couple weeks, to make a decision that our lives are going to be centered on Jesus. That we're not going to be consumed with running after everything. I know that those pressures are real. Those pressures are very real even right now. We can just get pursuing all sorts of things and get worried about all sorts of things. But I think that God's calling us to a balance. And he's just telling us, fix your eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on the kingdom of God. And he actually makes a promise when we focus in on his kingdom, when we focus in on righteousness, he tells us actually all those things that we worry about, all those things that can consume our attention, all those things that can become big pursuits that we just get chasing after, he actually tells us, I'm going to help you. I'm going to provide all of those things for you. But there's a balance here. We got to fix our eyes on Jesus. And so I want to encourage all of you that you would in this moment, 
this is an important season to center your life. Center your life on Jesus. And we want to be people that are asking God, Lord, rebuild me from the ground up. Do something new and speak something new and fresh into my life. And help me to just bring new balance, the type of balance that you want me to carry into the rest of my life, even as I pivot towards that and as we move towards that. And so I, I can't encourage you enough as just we even agree to that together. So let's just bow our heads as I pray over you. God, I just thank you for every person that's listening today. And God, you have plans and purposes for each one of us, each one of us. And God, you want us to be people of balance. God, we don't want to be consumed with all the worries and all the cares. God, help us to focus on you. And God, help us to pace our life. God, help us to just get these things in order. Help us to even self-check and evaluate where we're at today. And God, even over these next couple weeks, I pray, take us on a journey that we're going to learn new things, that we're going to be challenged, but we're going to come out the other end of this season. We're going to be changed. We're going to be different. We're going to be more set and in balance on the things that you want us to be. And so I pray that over each one of us today in Jesus' name. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one we could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you jesus jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you.
What an incredible service. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit more balanced and that you were as blessed and encouraged as I was. Now, before we completely let you go, let's watch our Family Life Pastors in action with a great message for our kids in just a short moment. Remember to stay safe and remember to remain hopeful. God bless.